This can be a doll, it can be a clay figure, it can be a wax figure, it can be a cloth doll, it can be a stuffed animal, it can be anything that represents your target. So we're going to start step by step. I want you to know that the options are limitless and feel free to tweak it and feel free to make it your own. Do whatever it is that your heart desires and whatever it is that you are feeling spiritually inclined to do to make this working work better for you. This is my own personal take, but I definitely encourage you to roll with it. So this represents the person, the person that you, that you loathe in this moment, the person that you want out of your life, the person, hell, even that you want dead. Like, let's be real, right? And when you see this, you're going to basically fill it with all of the contempt, all of the hate, all of the sour, bitter feelings that you feel towards that person. So you're already infusing it with negativity simply by holding it and feeling how you feel about that person, right? So that's most important. So um, from here, what people will usually do is, what pe uh, people are conditioned to do actually, is what they see on TV and what they've learned in, you know, uh, TV shows and stuff like that. You'll always see them um, poking pins in the doll. Well, that's what people had available to them back in those days, but now we have a lot more available to us. So the most important thing, in my opinion, you need to do when you're doing a work like this is make sure that the person doesn't see what you're doing. So I think that it's very important to block out their eyes so that they don't see what's happening. Uh, I must say, never negate your work though. Never doubt your work. Never think that it's not going to happen because if you put faith into it, it will. So we're blocking out their eyes so that they don't see us. Okay, that's most important. We don't want them knowing that it's us doing this. Or maybe you do and you don't block out their eyes. That's fine. But most of us don't want them to know. Secondly, we don't want them speaking of us. So we're going to block out the mouth. You can put an X with marker. Or if you want to get a little bit more vulgar, you can uh, get a knife and scratch out their lips on the doll. You can, you can peel off the lips on the doll if you want to. Like I said, there's no limit here. If you want to gouge out their eyes, you can. We happen to have <laughs> some thumbtacks for that. Or if your doll is bigger, you can use nails. You can use uh, pins. But right now we have thumbtacks because the doll is small. So we're gouging out their eyes. Okay? So we can do the same thing on the mouth if you want to. This is so that they don't um, speak of you and they don't see you. Okay. So we have that covered. And in the same vein, this person can feel this physically. This person uh, could be um, having eye issues, could be going blind, uh, could get glaucoma, could get a ruptured vein, um, all kinds of cool stuff. You know, um, this person could get uh, sores in their mouth. It could, you know, uh, manifest as uh, lip lip punctures, um, all kinds of distressing things happening to the mouth. Also physical indicators that your work is working. Now, you see this long, beautiful hair here? I think you get what I'm going to say. If you want to, you can rat it up. Um, you can cut it off or you can um, put it in honey. Okay, this is going to be interesting. You can put it in honey and put it in a jar full of ants so that the ants are crawling all over them. They'll feel it on their body as tingling or pricking sensations. That's one thing you can do with them. Um, you can even, like if they do have long hair, you can make their hair strangle themselves if you want to. 
Um, there, like I said, the sky's the limit with that. Uh, but this is what we see most traditionally. They block out the eyes, block out the mouth. Most important, because this is your way of kind of like protecting your identity. So from here, um, I have some red string, some red rope. We could metaphorically or physically make the person choke. Maybe this is a person that always uh, is one-upping you in your office, always has something to say, always trying to um, out-talk you, always trying to outshine you by the wagging tongue. So you can make them choke. You know the saying, you know, they choked or they couldn't speak or they couldn't think. You can physically choke them with string. Or if you want to bind them from doing something to you, of course, you would wrap their the entire body, the entire doll body that is. It's kind of tedious, but it allows you to focus your intent on the mission at hand and you bind them with the rope like this. You will see a lot of this, uh, uh, this kind of working unearthed in cemeteries, um, in videos on YouTube out of Mexico, because this work, this kind of binding is used in love binding. But in this case, you can also bind the person from, <laughs> as it's stated in the movie, the old movie, The Craft, from doing harm. You can bind them. You keep them in a state of uh, imprisonment. Like that, see? And let's not forget that, I mean, that's just one option. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Um, that's just one option. Another thing is, is if you have this undeniable hate for someone, you can, uh, you can uh, burn it, burn the doll. You can douse it with alcohol and make sure that, you know, you keep it away from your altar. You can burn it outside or burn it in a, in a secluded place. Um, but what I'm going to show you is one of my favorites and it involves a jar and the reason that I like the jar is because you can check up on it. Now keeping this in your home is going to keep that negativity in your home. So it might be best to keep it outside the home or in a secret place that only you know about. So let me go get my tools and I'll be right back. Okay now I have a bottle big enough to fit the doll uh, I have some activated charcoal. Doesn't have to be activated charcoal. Can be anything that makes liquid black. It can be food coloring. It can be tar. It can be um, ink. Anything that's going to cloud water and make it black. Okay? I also have some pepper. For obvious reasons. Right? What happens when pepper comes in contact with, with your face? You know, well, besides your mouth. <laughs> um, and I have extra virgin olive oil, but you don't have to use this kind. A lot of people associate um, olive oil with holy things, with purified things. You don't have to use olive oil. What we're trying to do here is create an environment of muck. We're trying to create an environment that's clouded, that's dangerous, that's uh, going to drive a person crazy, that's going to keep them in the dark. That's what this bottle is representing. It's their environment. So that's where the activated charcoal comes in. All right. We're making it dark for them. Uh, so I'm going to take all of this uh, oil. My husband's going to kill me. <laughs> we also have two conflicting energies here. This is a war happening right here. You see how they remain separated? What happens if you shake them up? You create a type of alchemy, a type of chaos. These are two forces that are fighting each other. So that creates an environment of um, f f like fighting like cats and dogs. They're going to constantly be angry. They're going to constantly be confused, constantly on edge, constantly anxious, have nightmares. Um, they won't know what's wrong with them because they won't realize that it's in their direct environment. Okay. 
So we're going to take the activated charcoal and we're just going to put, we're just going to make a mess here. Oh, I already made a mess. Very fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should probably use a spoon, right? Hey, if it's not messy, is it still witchcraft? Okay. So we're going to put a heaping amount here. Get in there, buddy. And remember, all the while, key, key, key information here. All the while, you're thinking about how much you hate this person and how much you want them to fail, how much you want them to die, how much you want them to suffer, and how much you want their world to fall apart. Here's some pepper, quite a bit of it, actually. Good old heaping amount there. Put that in there. Some people would add sulfur, but I, I mean, if you if you want to, that's fine. Make sure you wear gloves and make sure you cover your face. You do not want to inhale sulfur. But a lot of people will use sulfur in here. They'll also use um, peppers. Peppers is my favorite, but I ran out. Um, and uh, you can put your feces in there. You can put your urine. Uh, don't put your spit, don't put your menstrual blood, don't put your semen in there because that's more of like a ownership type of thing. Uh, but you can put your excrement in here if you want to. You're creating a, a crap environment, so feel free. You can put dog poop, cat poop, um, pins, needles, thumbtacks. Um, you can put glass in here. You can put um, any sharp objects in here that you want to. Anything that's going to hurt them, like if they're in an Iron Maiden, almost. Okay, so what we're going to do is whatever you've done to your doll, you before you put it in the bottle, if that's what you're going to do, make sure that you're done with the torture on the doll. Uh, like I said, you could burn a candle over it, uh, a candle infused with your intention, and cover it with wax. You can bind it. You can uh, anything you like. The sky is the limit. Also, I want to mention before you put the doll in there, if it's a doll with a removable head, this is a perfect opportunity to drive them insane. Let's uh, hold this off to the corner for just a little bit. So, that little hole right there, perfect for stuffing. <laughs> yep. So what I have on hand... Uh, you can use poisonous herbs if you want to, of course, take necessary precautions. Um, but what, I'm, what I have on hand is mugwort. Mugwort, I know, is usually seen as the light and frilly herb that gives you good dreams and stuff like that. But every herb has both positive and negative traits. You can turn any herb into a poison if you want to. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this person is driven crazy by their dreams. They are literally overdosing on mugwort, right? The equivalent of overdosing on mugwort. I'm going to put this in there. Now, like I said, you can put anything in here that you want. You can put your pee, your spit, your poop. I know that that sounds disgusting, but if it's disgusting to you, imagine how it's going to be for the working. It's going to be perfect. So we're going to put some of that in there. Some sticks along with it. The sticks, the, the herbs that are little picos inside the, the mugwort. You can seal this with wax if you want to, but for the sake and the purpose of this tutorial, or, or you can even put the the body in there separate from the head so they feel like they've lost their head. Who knows? I mean, you could even make it to where that that's their fate, decapitation. You know, if you want that person decapitated, I mean, I am not here to judge you. So then I'm going to put the doll's head back on. Get back on there. Now their, their mind is going to be clouded because of the mugwort. You don't have to use mugwort, but a lot of us have mugwort on hand. So, so here we go. 
let's let's see if she fits with those pins in her head even if they fall out it's okay because we've already done the work Just head first get in there that's so cool now we're gonna close it up real good And all the opposing forces, we're going to shake them up. Ooh. Don't let it go everywhere. We're going to shake it up. You see how that... Uh, oh, doesn't that look cool? You see how that oil and water are fighting each other, but the activated charcoal is turning, and turning things black? That's what we want. This would make a cool lava lamp. Anyway... So yeah, we're mixing them up. This is now your target's environment. Black, muck, disgusting, confusing. It would drive them crazy. And I like how there's little areas in here where you can kind of peek through. This is pretty cool because it allows the person to have a glance of sanity. But when you shake it, get sucked right back in. That's the, that's the cool part about having it in a bottle or having it in a jar, is that you get to mess with them consistently. By your hand, you can continuously corrode their environment. You can even go back if you want to and add more uh, ingredients if you want to, to cloud them up even more. So yeah, the sky's the limit. You can put, that's cool, it almost looks like there's a face right there. Um, you can put whatever you want to in there. Um, jars are very handy. Look, you can see the feet at the top. Jars are very handy because they're a symbol. They're, they're, you can have them be mobile, take them with you, but they're also a symbol of the person's environment. And everything that you put in there is important because it's, uh, sympathetic. Sympathetic magic is using objects to represent what you want to happen. It's the oldest kind of magic known to man. And in my opinion, one of the most effective. So that's why tools are important in these cases because they, uh, they help you visualize. So like say you want a person to like, like say, you know, somebody that's an alcoholic and you're just sick of their stuff and you don't care anymore and you want them to to drink themselves to death you would fill this bottle with alcohol so that they literally drown in their vice you know um, if they have an addiction to any other kind of drug I'm not encouraging this but there are people out there that that want to do this so that's why I'm saying it if they have an addiction to a certain kind of drug and you're fed up and you don't you want to get rid of them you put some of that drug in the bottle so that they essentially, you know. Uh, and say that a person like, I don't know, is obese and doesn't stop eating, you know, fill this with like their favorite soft drink or their drink of choice along with the cloudiness of the rest of the of the substance and it is going to turn that that food or that um, that vice of theirs into their demise so fun right so yeah that's how you would use a poppet and oh I also want to mention that you can you if you're very concerned about um, destroying the environment and stuff like that you can use a poppet that's biodegradable you can use something made out of cotton you can use something um, made out of food. For example, you can carve a potato. You can carve an apple. You can um, use a corn husk, corn husk dollies. Uh, maybe I'll make a video on corn husk dollies. And um, the sky's the limit. Like I said, guys, use what you have available to you to make this work. But this is my favorite. This is, uh, this is the ritual that I go to. And this is the one that seems to work for me, is clouding the environment and um, drowning them in their own 
their own gunk. So thanks for watching guys. Thank you for becoming a member. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them below and um, I'll do my best to get back to you. I uh, also want to wish you happy holidays. I want to, you know, hope you have a, a good new year and I hope that everything works out for you. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I'm sorry. I also wanted to mention one more thing. What I have planned for this channel is a video every two weeks, a tutorial, a video like this. And then at the end of the month, I'm going to be doing re a reading for the members. Uh, I'm going to be doing it based off your astrological sign. Because I feel like that would be all-encompassing. But I'm happy that you joined. Thank you very much. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. And little demon face right here says bye. <laughs>